Welcome, Wolf of Wolfettes, to Detroit Become Human on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, if you don't know what this game is, Detroit Become Human is made by Quantic Dream, and their games are very similar to, like, Telltale games and also games like Life is Strange and stuff like that, you know. There isn't much gameplay, it's pretty much an interactive movie, you know. You, you make decisions, you do some quick time events, things like that, you know. But they're generally very good stories. Now, um, normally I'm not a big fan of Quantic Dream. I don't normally like the games, but this game I have enjoyed very much. I've not finished it yet, I think I'm about three quarters of the way through but it's been a very good game so far so we're going to be doing it on youtube also sorry i didn't start doing this on release day um the reason i didn't start was because this game released right before i was on holiday so i didn't want to have to faff around making really bad videos because i was in a rush and stuff you know so i decided to wait a week and then do it when i was back to work so we're going to be starting it today now um this game you play as three different androids and you experience three different perspectives of their lives. You have one android, the female, called Kara. You have a black android named Marcus and you have a white android named um, Connor. And you play through each of their stories, you know, and stuff like that. And you experience what life is like for each of these androids and stuff like that. So let's, um, let's get straight into this. Um, so we've got our language, we've got our text language, subtitles are on. Uh, subtitles are small. Um, I'm going to leave it on small. If any of you guys and girls have any problems reading the uh, subtitles, let me know in the comment section and I'll make them bigger in the third video because I'm going to be making two videos today. So if you want me to make the subtitles bigger, let me know and I'll do it in the third part. But yeah, I think that's all set. So let's do it. Please adjust your screen settings. Now, I'm going to warn you right now, this game is very, very, very story heavy. There's so much talking, you know, like I said, it's pretty much an interactive movie. So this playthrough is going to be very, very lacking in my commentary because I don't want to interrupt the characters and ruin the story and stuff like that. So I'm going to talk when I have a chance. But generally, this will just be a watch the game and ignore me kind of playthrough, you know. I have a, I have a big, big problem with these games because I just don't know when to uh, commentate. If you're wondering why HDR is off, is because um, I have my setup going through my um, my PlayStation VR box, and for some reason that doesn't have any HDR pass through or whatever it is, or 4K pass through, something like that. So it means uh, I don't get the full benefits of the PS4 Pro when I'm recording for YouTube. So yeah, it's a bit of a problem. I can set it up the other way, I suppose, but I can't record in 4K anyway, so there's not really any point. Right, brightness, I think I'm going to put this on um, 10, because I had it on 0 in my own playthrough, and it's a little bit dark, so we're going to keep it on about 10. Warning. Settings will automatically revert. Oh, no, okay, yeah, we do want to do Thank it. Thank you. Now select your profile. Now select your profile. Okay, so choose difficulty. We've got experienced, and we've got casual. Um, I think the problem with playing on experienced is it makes things like the quick time events a lot more faster and a little bit more less forgiving, you know, so there's a higher chance that your characters can die. Because I think the main characters can actually die in this game. So if you do mess up, you know, and you do have a favourite character, you will lose them for the rest of the playthrough as far as I know. So we're going to keep it on casual just because I don't want to start losing characters and ruining the story, you know. <laughs> I've been, I've been playing it on experienced on my own and um, things didn't go very well. Things did not go very well. So I'm just going to keep it on casual. It's not, it's not really anything, anything different about experience. It just makes things a bit more crazy with cut with uh, quick time events, things like that. When this sign is displayed, please do not turn off your console. You are now ready to begin Detroit. Remember, this is not just a story. This is our future. That android is a bit creepy. I can't really mention it now because there's going to be a lot of talking. But yeah, she's very creepy. I'll tell you in a minute when I get a chance. <laughs> this android is Connor. And he works for the police department as far as I know. Might need to turn the telly down a little bit. <clears throat> Negotiator on site. Negotiator on site. 
Lovely. Right, now uh, before we start this, let me have a look on the settings because I want to um, I wanna uh, make sure the music isn't too loud because this is the kind of game that I'm going to have to edit and make it where you can hear me clearly and also the characters. Audio, only available in the main menu. Ah, oh, come on. All right, never mind. Right, so... um. Like I said, there's three different characters in this game. You've got Connor, who works for the police department. You've got, and I think he might be the newest, most advanced android, as far as I know. You've got Kara, who is more like a housekeeper type robot. And then you've got uh, Marcus, which is more like a helper robot, you know. And like I said, they all have their own separate stories and stuff involving their lives and things like that. So it's very good. Lots to keep up with, though. But yeah, when you're playing as Connor, make sure you explore everything because um, as he's like, he works with the police, you know, it's good to have all the information possible because then you can actually open up different dialogue trees and things like that, you know. But yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look around. The uh, controls in this... I, I can't the controls in this game are very... I don't know, I hated them at first, but I really like them now. And it also uses the touchpad a lot, which is a nice change, because a lot of the uh, recent PS4 games, especially PS4 exclusives, they don't really use the touchpad, you know. It's generally just it's generally just used for the map, in it. So it's nice to have this touchpad actually used for once. Okay, so we've got a mum, dad, and a daughter. Lovely. Because uh, if you've played the demo, I think what we're doing at the moment is the demo. So if you've played the Detroit demo, this is the demo section, pretty much. Oh, well, I'll definitely save it, won't I? Lovely. <laughs> Software instability. See, th this is what uh, one thing I've noticed, you know. Because he is supposed to be the most advanced android, I think he's supposed to be the most compliant with humans, you know. He does as he's told. He, he succeeds in his mission. And um, whenever you do something that's not really in his programming, which he's not really, he's not designed to care about a fish, he seems to, you seem to get a little thing in the corner that uh, increases your software instability, you know, so... Yeah, we're going to have to monitor that, because uh, I'm a pretty nice guy, really. That looks like one of those uh, Japanese fighting fishes, or whatever they're called. I think it's called that. Might be wrong, though. Please, please, you got to save my little girl. Wait. You're sending an android? All right, ma'am. We you need to go. You can't do that. You... Why aren't you sending a real person? Well, that's pretty rude, isn't it? That's pretty damn rude. I'm here to save her daughter and she's giving me shit. <laughs> I suppose I, I, would, I do understand why they would feel like that, though. I mean, if you had somebody trying to rescue your daughter, you would prefer a human, wouldn't you? Because a human can actually sympathise and stuff like that. So, Although it is, it is an android that's causing the problems. So sending an android to talk to an android makes more sense, really. So I don't know what she's moaning about, but, you know... If you hold R2, you get this little thing come up right here and it tells you your objective. You don't really need to know your objective because it will tell you and I don't think you're going to forget. So, And then you've got R1, which changes the camera angle. Now, the only problem I've got with this game is all of the characters in this game seem to control, like, um, I think her name's Regina from Dino Crisis or maybe Silent Hill 3. You know how the characters sort of like turn and move. It's, it's very weird. I don't know if it's like called tank controls, but it feels like a weird version of tank controls. I don't know. I don't like how the characters move in this game. But yeah, we're going to go speak to the the, uh, the um, captain. How you doing, buddies? There's actually quite a few famous actors in this game that you guys and girls might recognise soon. Captain Allen, my name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. It's firing and everything moves. It already shot down two of my men. We could easily get it, but they're on the edge of the balcony. If it falls, she falls. Do you know its name? I haven't got a clue. Does it matter? I need information to determine the best approach. Has it experienced an emotional shock recently? Listen, saving that kid is all that matters. So either you deal with this fucking android now, or I'll take care of it. 
Good. <laughs> Probability of success, 48%. Okay, so um, like I said, whenever you're controlling Connor, because he works with a police department, there's lots of like exploration, looking for clues, trying to open up new types of dialogue and stuff like that. So especially when you're controlling Marcus, uh, not Marcus, Connor, make sure you look around, you know, because you can really fuck things up <laughs> if you don't know uh, all of the uh, different dialogue trees and stuff. Okay. So there's lots of clues and stuff we have to look for. So some of the some of the more important information is going to be like trying to find out what the robot's name is, you know, because you don't really want to talk to an angry android that's not very happy and then just start referring to it by its like its uh, product product name, you know, and stuff like that. If you talk to it with its actual name, I reckon that'd be um, a lot more successful in trying to make it happy. You have to do you have to reconstruct what happens and stuff like that. Deviant's father took the her uh, deviant took the father's gun. Okay, now the deviants are um, the androids that have gone wrong, pretty much. <laughs> so whenever they talk about deviants, those are the androids that are, have gone wrong. You know, see, we've uh, we found some information, so now our probability of success has gone up. I think when I did this on my own, I uh, I definitely succeeded with my mission, but I don't think I necessarily did it in the best way. You know, I saved the girl, but I felt a bit of a jerk after, so I'm going to try and do it a bit differently this time. Well, they're listening to a bit of Eminem. Child didn't hear gunshots, okay. She was too busy, too busy listening to some of that Eminem. There is an absolutely crazy magpie sitting on my windowsill. Go away! Leave me alone! Probably trying to steal my donuts. They're probably teaming up with the uh, seagulls. I expected him to say hi Daniel then. <laughs> okay, so we've learned that his name is Daniel, so that's going to be useful. You've unlocked a dialogue or action, often beneficial, see? But yeah, it, it, you have to do this with all of the androids and stuff, but obviously w when you're working with uh, Connor, it's to do with some sort of crime scene. So knowing what happened is a lot more important than when you're working with like Marcus and Kara and that. But yeah, this is a pretty longish game from what I've seen. I saw a lot of people say it was 10 hours, but from what I've seen, it's already longer than 10 hours. And... Uh, I've still not finished it, so I don't know what people are on about, really. <laughs> I guess this is the father that the android has shot. Left kidney perforated. Not very good. Upper lung hemorrhage. Lovely. So he's had a good day. He's had a pretty good day, you know. <laughs> Deceased. John Phillips, six foot. Lovely. Lower lung hemorrhage, internal bleeding. Because sometimes it will seem like the android is a criminal, but then you actually look at all the research and sometimes it's actually the human that's caused all of the problems, you know. That's why you need to uh, see what's going on. Father was holding something. And then he got pew pewed. Now we need to find what he... Ah, there we go. We need to find what he dropped. There you go. I think this might be the most important thing to learn here, actually. Yeah. I think this might be one of the biggest pieces of information that you need to learn. See what I mean? See what I mean? No, they've uh, they've ordered a brand new angel. Oh shit! <laughs> Flipping hell! Is he just? Did he just kill another one? I suppose the problem with androids, uh, dealing with an android, is they're obviously they're a computer. You know, they're a machine, so they can very easily shoot people with like precise gunshots. You know, 
But yeah, it looks like they were planning on replacing Daniel, so I suppose he's gotten a little bit upset about that. Oh, there he is. Okay, yeah, okay. Right, we've heard enough of that. We know what's going on. Family was about to have dinner. Okay, I don't think that's very useful information. I don't know if I'm missing anything else. I think there's another thing I need to uh, examine. Let's have a look over here, because I think there should be another body. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, what's this? Oh, now uh, I think these are collectibles. Yeah. I don't know if this one necessarily is, but there's a lot of magazines in this game as collectibles that you can pick up and read. So if you see any magazines in this game, make sure you pick them up if you want to get yourself a trophy. DPD officer was first responder. Okay. Bullet wound. Deceased Anthony... Deckard. Lovely. Oh, what's going on with his hand? Gunshot residue. Okay, then. Oh, there we go. Hostage witnessed the shooting. Okay. Well, I'm sure she already knows what's going on now. I mean, she's got a gun to her head and she's on the side of a roof. I think she knows what's going on. Cop shot the deviant. Oh. I think, actually... I don't know if I've missed something, but I know there was an option where I could pick up a gun. I don't know if it's this gun or if it was another gun, but I know there was an option for me to take a gun. But I think I ended up not using it just because I didn't want to end up pissing off the android. Because if you can actually foul, you know. That's the thing with this game. It, it stresses you out sometimes because you can foul. I'm going to take it with me just in case I do mess up. Probability of success is 74%. I think when I did this, it was on like 80. Let's have a look if there's anything else we can explore, and then we will head out of there. Oh, here we go. What's this? Oh, shoot. Hostage could be wounded. Or she just stepped in one of her family members' blood. Because there's a lot of human blood in here. This blue stuff on the floor, that's blue blood, and that belongs to the androids. So if you ever see stuff like that, uh, it's because there's probably an android around. Or there's been a killed android or something. <laughs> that, that, that's going to be quite funny when he does that later on. That's how he analyzes like, liquids and stuff. Okay, there's a PL600. Because I think I'm the newest kind of model. You know, I'm the one that doesn't go wrong. I'm the perfect model, pretty much, you know. I'm the T6000. Okay, right, we're going to head outside now and we're going to see if we can do this. That's rude. Stay back! Don't come any closer or I'll jump! No, no, please, I'm begging you! slowly. Oh, that's not my fault. That's the helicopter's fault. Gain deviance trust. Approach slowly. Yeah, don't walk too quick. Reassure Daniel. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to talk and find a solution. Talk? I don't want to talk. It's too late for that now. It's too late. Are you armed? Yes. Yes. I have a gun. Drop it. No sudden moves or I'll shoot. 
Oh, well, he's happy about that. Possible calls. I think that's because he was being replaced. They were going to replace you, and you became upset. That's what happened, right? They thought I was part of the family. They thought I mattered. But I was just their toy. Something to throw away when you're done with it. I don't blame him for being angry, to be honest. I don't blame him at all. You do have a limited amount of time to make a choice, so do be quick. I know you and Emma were very close. You think she betrayed you, but she's done nothing wrong. She lied to me! I thought she loved me. She does love you. She's a little girl, for God's wrong. sake. She's just like all the other humans. Daniel, no! Listen, I know it's not your fault. These emotions you're feeling are just errors in your software. No, it's not my fault. I never wanted this. I love them, you know? But I was nothing to them. Just a slave to be ordered around. It's weird hearing an android say he loves them. I can't stand that noise anymore! <laughs> Tell that helicopter to get out of here! the city I'll let her go that's impossible Daniel let the girl go and I promise you won't be hurt I don't want to die you're not going to die we're just going to talk nothing will happen to you you have my word oh, nice Okay. I trust you. You probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't. <laughs> Fuck. I got the same bloody outcome as I got on my own. I feel like a jerk. You lied to me, Connor. <laughs> I didn't tell him to shoot. <laughs> Whoops. Well, you know, I did what I was mission uh, programmed to do. You know, I achieved the mission. I saved the kid, you know. Connor did his duty. But yeah, this whole game is pretty much like a cutscene, you know, so I'm not going to do what I usually do where I remove my face during the cutscenes and let you enjoy it, you know. It's just going to be my beautiful face in every every uh, part of this game, you know, so. Yeah, but um, when, you finish a, when you finish a chapter, I guess you would call it, um, it shows you all of the different outcomes, you know, and all of the different, like, options that you didn't unlock or things you didn't find and stuff like that, you know. You also get points. I'm not sure what the points are for yet. But um, I suppose you can use them to unlock something or whatever. But there you go. You've got the mission start. We saved the fish. You know, I suppose there was also the option to not save it. We took the gun. There was also probably the option not to take it. Uh, there was something here we didn't learn about the uh, deviant, I guess. Then we confronted, the, we confronted the deviant, you know. Lots of different options. Lots of different outcomes. Quite a few different outcomes. Obviously, the, one of the outcomes is the actual... I know one of the outcomes is... Um, Daniel jumps off the edge with the girl. So that's probably a very bad ending. You don't want to get that, I guess. But it looks like there's quite a few others, actually. I suppose there's one where I can attack him. Yeah, because I think there's a way of attacking him, but you also sacrifice yourself and kill yourself. Yeah, I think there's quite a few different outcomes for this mission, actually. But yeah, like I said, there's lots of different ways you can do these. So it's definitely very replayable, this game. But let's continue. Got about five minutes, so we should be able to do some of the next bit. OK. 
item. This is the top of the range household assistant. It cooks 10,000 different dishes. Come on, Zoe, let's go. 200 languages and dialects. And handles the kids' medical yeah. elementary school up to university. Wow. Oh. Honey, it looks amazing. This is exactly what we need. I guess I'm in a shop at the moment. How much did you say it costs? At the moment, we're doing a special promotion on this entire range. I can show you that model. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what are you so close to before? Got a spare legs over there. It switches to surveillance mode. Contacts emergency services. I wonder if the androids actually get excited about being bored. Because I suppose they're bored of just standing here, but I suppose they're in like low power mode. Look how expensive these androids are. Oh, God. It's a bit difficult getting it back in working order. Okay. It was really messed up. What'd you say happened to it again? <clears throat> the car hit it. Stupid accident. Ah, uh, see. Anyway, it's as good as new now, except that we had to reset it, meaning we had to wipe its memory. I hope you don't mind. It'll be fine. Okay. Did you give it a name? My daughter did. AX400, register your name. Kara. My name is Kara. Lovely. Go to Bellini Paint Shop. Okay, well, I'm going to have to end the video now anyway, Wolf and Wolfette. So we're going to carry on with this next time. So I'll give it a pause just in case they say anything. But yeah, thanks for watching, Wolf and Wolfettes. Hopefully you enjoyed this first video of Detroit Become Human. I'm going to be recording part two straight after this one. So like I said, if you want me to adjust the uh, subtitles, I will do it in part three. Also, if the audio levels seem a bit crappy... Let me know in the comments, you know, whether I'm too quiet or whether the game's too quiet, stuff like that. Because when it's very story-heavy games with lots of talking, I have a very big problem with editing. Because I always feel like something's not quite right. Nobody ever complains about it, but I always feel like something's not quite right. So, definitely be honest with me, you know, because I want you to be able to enjoy the video. Obviously, it depends on your device, you know, because my videos always sound very weird on laptops. But they sound fine on PCs, uh, like computers... Um, desktop computers, TVs, and mobiles, but on laptops, I always feel like my videos sound weird. So yeah, let me know. And also on tablets, they sound fine as well. But yeah, 
Let me know in the comments if everything's uh, good or bad. But yeah, thanks for watching, Wolf. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like, share, and join the pack today. Arr!